Hey everyone, welcome to another Patreon topic video. This one is for Gus, and it's a really cool subject I've been looking forward to talking about, especially since it lets me sort of stretch my stretch my wings or whatever a little bit and talk about more broadly than just shmups, but also how this ties into shmups, which is Malcolm Gladwell's book Outliers and his 10,000 hours of practice over 10 years to achieve mastery, and how there are many people who have followed this sort of routine and practice regimen over time and have found success this way. And so I think before I start talking about how it ties into shmups, I want to just talk about my thoughts on this idea in general because it came out in 2008 uh, in, in Outliers, a best-selling book. You know, it was, it was hot. Let's not deny it. It was number one bestseller. He was on The Daily Show. He was on all these talk shows. Charlie Rose. The dude was lighting it up. And so... The funny thing is, because I do have a bit of a background in academia type worlds and so circles and I have many friends in that world or whatever, and the funny thing about academia is it's actually a lot like shmups, to be honest, where if you ever find success or find, you know, some little, because like most academics are not commercially successful whatsoever, right, just like most shmup players, but whenever someone does find a little bit of success, man, the, the haters start coming out of the woods, and so... I think a lot of the debunking of this idea and a lot of the criticism that has been thrown at this idea over the years is honestly, I don't know how much good faith is behind a lot of it because it just sounds like a lot of people nitpicking the numbers and saying, and coming up with just sort of contrary examples for the hell of it, more like. You know, no one's really backed up that I've seen so far. Maybe someone has and I just haven't seen it because it never got successful, but no one's really come back at him with, okay, no, this is a better way to do it. This is the way to do it. Check this out. So what I really respect about Malcolm Gladwell's book and about himself is that he puts some hard numbers on the page. He puts some lines in the sand and he says, okay, put an action plan, right? We're going to do this and here is what you do, the actions. Because what is honestly annoying about a lot of academic world talks and, you know, philosophy classes, you know, I've been through all that, <laughs> um, is that, yeah, it's cool to intellectualize things and talk about them and stuff, but there does come a point in the, in the world where you have to create some kind of tangible plan to put into practice, and uh, that's what he did with this book. He said, okay, 10,000 hours, three hours a day, 20 hours a week, let's go, practice that over 10 years, you're going to get good at what you're doing. And honestly, just from my own personal experience of mastering, you know, some pretty complex uh, talents over the years or whatever, you know, playing instruments, playing guitar, being a triathlete, all those sorts of things, um, yeah, they require training. You don't just wake up one day and say, okay, I'm running a marathon today, um, maybe if you're a badass, but most people just can't do that, right? And so, or same thing with triathlon, same thing with playing instruments and uh, video games and competitive video gaming as well, right? Um, so most people are not able to just walk into mastery at a very quick pace, right? It takes some time. And I found, personally, that the recipe he's given you is a really solid recipe. It's really, of course, there's going to be um, exceptions to this. I think if people take this 100% literally, you're one, you're missing the point, and two, nothing is ever going to be 100% literally correct in life. That's just not going to happen. Not everything is going to be okay, you know, not everything is pure science. And so, especially with this sort of thing, especially with performance and talent and human beings and all our different, uh, di all our differences and ability and predispositions, it's way too complicated and messy to just have like this golden formula, but I think the formula he puts out is really solid. Um, three hours a day, so you're getting... So the thing is, is when you're trying to compete and improve, there's like different time requirements i found. So for instance, when I was trying to drop my times in triathlons and stuff, one hour a day would maintain my physical fitness and maintain my skills. So if I practiced one hour a day, six days a week or whatever, I would be able to maintain my current level of ability. However, if I wanted to get better, I had to put more time in it. I had to put three hours a day. However, I went through a period where I wanted to get really good, really fast, 
Um, <laughs> I had some personal vendettas I wanted to prove, right? So I started practicing like six hours a day, five or six hours a day. Um, this was in my early years in college. For like a year and a half, I'm not kidding. Like all I did for a year and a half was basically run, swim, and bike. And um, it didn't really help me all that much in the long run. My, t my times did not improve. And in fact, I was uh, damaging my body more than uh, strengthening it at that point because it was just too much. I was pushing myself too far, too hard. And so I think honestly, three hours a day, uh, six days, you know, 20 hours a week, that is a very solid game plan moving forward. And another thing about these deep bunks that I was going through and watching is that a lot of them are just kind of, you know, they're just uh, coming up with. I don't know what to say. They're not in good faith, I don't think, because they're not really addressing the heart of the idea, the heart of the concept. The concept is how do you master something? What is the plan? How do you make this happen? And I think Malcolm Gladwell, um, the dude puts out some solid ideas that I think are great. Um, of course, is everything 100% perfect? No. And um, I don't think, I, to me, it doesn't really matter that much if the you know the Academy of Sciences recognizes the idea or not I'm not that type of person it's more like I tried it out it works for me obviously and it would be something I would recommend to someone else say, okay how do I get good at guitar practice three hours a day 20 hours a week that you will get bet you will get better somehow will you become the best guitarist around maybe maybe not but you will get better actually here's a deep cut for you guys so Way back on the day before Eris was a famous streamer, he used to do a podcast called Avoiding the Puddle. And I really enjoyed that podcast because he delved into a lot of these types of topics with fighting games, you know, getting better, what's at the heart of getting better in the games. And what was funny is there's this one player who was get at looking for advice and he was doing all these different things. And Eris was just saying, look, you got to play the game. You got to put the hours in. You're going to get better no matter how stupid you are if you keep just keep playing. And I actually think that holds true with shmups in a lot of ways. Of course, there's better ways to optimize your time. And there's going to come points where your skill is going to plateau. And you need to come up with new innovations and new ways to view the genre and to practice to get on a higher level. But, but basically, when you're starting out, you just have to put in that time. And um, so I think Malcolm Gladwell's idea really supports that. Um, another thing that I saw with these debunking theories that I thought was sort of missing the point was people were conflating success with mastery when those two are definitely not the same whatsoever. So mastery to me is the technical uh, side of things, the being a the ability to do it. Success is the marketing, the um, commercialization of something and those two cannot be conflated right and so you can apply this idea to something like becoming commercially successful um, a lot of commercially successful people do put in you know hundreds of hours over the course of years that's a good game plan but uh, when it comes to commercial success nothing is guaranteed you know there's a lot of fa there's too many factors to pin down a formula of what works and what doesn't work and so Really, all you can do is persist and improve your craft, improve your marketing as much as you can. But so when people say examples like, well, there was this painter, he painted his entire life, he paint, he put in the, he definitely put in the whatever thousands and thousands of hours, but he never was a success, so this disproves the theory. It doesn't disprove the theory if the dude was a good painter. If the guy sucked at painting his entire life, I mean, of course that can just happen, right? Some people just don't have that ability to improve you know there's something wrong there but most people do and so if the dude became this amazing painter but no one bought his paintings because you know his marketing sucked or he never got around to getting them marketed or whatever that doesn't disprove Malcolm Gladwell's theory that he didn't master painting or not and that's something I talked about actually in another YouTube video that no one watches because it's not about <laughs> video games but um, I talked about how um, when it comes to content, uh, view counts and sub counts do not equal quality. They are not indicators of quality at all. They're indicators of uh, marketing ability for sure, 
or you know there's a lot of things that go in basically what I'm saying is um, you want to have quality content obviously for the sake of everyone involved but it's not gonna be the only factor to your success right I mean I feel that way about many of my podcast episodes I feel like I've turned out some amazing podcast episodes that have like no views no one watches them no one discusses them like my zero ranger interview i think i consider that a very good interview and uh, for my stuff it has a good amount of views but for the world of youtube it's still poverty level right so just stuff like that um quality doesn't always uh, guarantee success there's way more factors that go into it so now let's talk about shmups and this theory because it's funny because i think one area in life that fits this theory really well is shmups because unlike being a CEO of a company unlike being a famous musician or a famous painter or a successful business person shmups do come down to numbers and there's a lot there's a lot less uh, um, luck or outside factors involved to become good at a shmup you put in that time you put in that consistent practice three hours a day 20 years I'm, you're going to be hard-pressed to f not find someone who's freaking good at a shmup doing that. It's just, you know, shmups are, you know, they're they're beautiful because they reward dedication. They reward this kind of mentality. A shmup will give you success. I don't know about uh, your painting career or whatever, your writing career, but you're damn right. Um, you put in that much time into Fatari, Fatari's, you're going to get a high score. Unless you're just totally blowing your time not practicing, but... Yeah, and I actually think shmups play into this theory really well because it's, uh, you know, shmups are a game of time, much, much more so than I think people realize, and that's one reason why I think the genre is not as popular as uh, other genres. Isn't that they're not good? Isn't that they're not fun? Is that they are not um, as instant gratification as uh, you would think? Because in order to become really, truly good at a shmup, you got to put in that time. And um, of course there are players like Jamers who can pick up a shmup and destroy it in a short amount of time, but he has built up who knows how many hours of practice and skill in the genre itself over the course of his life, and you, you, you have to realize that he has learned skills like routing and finding exploits and finding uh, optimized ways of doing things. That's a skill he's built up over time. Of course there's natural and talent involved with everyone, but with shmups, you know, it does. You can just distill it down to the numbers. You can just distill it down to frame by frame, technique by technique, section by section. Just memorize everything, um, you know, and really study it, and you're gonna find success. So, I guess in closing, I do like this theory, and I do think it ties into shmups really well. Is it 100% literally true? No, it is not. But the the formula he pres prescribes of over 10 years, 3 hours a day, 20 hours a week, that is a good formula for getting good at a shmup. Uh, I can give, guarantee you that much. Um, I'm sure WTN and all those famous Japanese super players put in similar amounts of time. And I know Western players have as well. So I think it's a really solid theory. Um, I think a lot of people who debunk it, um, you know, of course there are legitimate critiques of course but I think a lot of the critiques I've seen are just in bad faith people just want to talk ish because it's trendy to talk ish on this uh, on this idea because it got popular so anyway before we head out let me uh, thank my patrons Dingo, Anthony A, Ben Wynn Brian Shiver, Double Vision Depths 20XX, Dunpeel 2064 EC2151 Full Set, Retro Shmupper Gus, Kiwi, oh Gus the man of the video Kiwi, Jacob Spring, Jake Ryan, Joe Angelo, John K, Quentin, Mark Sloan, Maz, Nathaniel Davis, and Electron, Okla Kugels, Omkal, Rhysosis, Sugumo, Young Money Sui, Plasmo, Utakaya, Bahoy TV 100, Malays, and Meher Kalendrian. Thanks for watching. <laughs>